Okay, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I know you're taking two to three hours out of your Saturday to do this. This is an extremely important election for the Washington County Democrats. You're electing your leaders and your officers, and we are going into a two-year campaign period that's gonna be extremely crucial to all of us. And we want a unified party, and we want people working together, and we want to be successful, and we all want to have fun while we're doing it. We have wonderful people who have stepped forward as candidates. Um, win or lose, I think we should all congratulate them on stepping forward and stepping up to run. So a few ground rules. The restrooms are out there to the right. You just go in there. On, they're out there. Um, I want to recognize Bobby for bringing the coffee and making all that effort. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> and I want to recognize Dan over here for stepping up to do the timing. Thank you, Dan. And the nominating committee, um, along with myself, is Dan um, Jensen, Garrett over there, and Susan, our next chair. So this has been a lot of work for everyone, and um, it's been, I think it's been well worth it. And thank you for coming to our forum, which is a first. I've had a few questions from people from other counties who want to know how we do. So this may be a good prototype. So this is awesome. Um, your questions, as Garrett has said, will come to Garrett. He is going to vet them, make sure you know everything's appropriate. We want to make sure that the, you know this is run in a respectful, civil manner. We have wonderful people stepping forward, so we're going to try to keep our our questions focused on issues, focused on you know um, the capabilities for the office and how they would proceed to actually work as good candidates. So keep your questions focused on that. I know that we have lots of things we like to say and ask, but let's for the forum purposes. Um, try to keep this as respectful and civil. <laughs> um, let's see. First what's going to happen is the chairs are going to have three minutes for an opening statement and then we're going to go with questions and answers. They'll have one minute to answer each question. Um, we have a timer up here who's going to give them warnings. And who won, that who won the, the coin flip? For number one. Who's number one? Jeremy, so Jeremy and Patrick come on up here and Jeremy's gonna start with his opening statement. Thank you everybody for coming today and for everybody who will be watching this after the fact or is watching currently. So first off, I just want to say a congratulations to everyone here in this room. As I said, we had a great election here, especially in Oregon on Tuesday. Heck, we flipped uh, two more house districts here in Washington County that we didn't even expect to go ahead and flip. So right now there's only one house district actually in Washington County that is not blue. So we're doing a good job Ed, and we need to go ahead and keep pushing and keep making a more effective change you know, here in our state legislature and here at our different local levels. So let's talk about how we can go ahead and keep pushing, you know, Oregon and Washington County into the future, you know, here at our own local level. So there's a few different things that I think we should go ahead and work on. And one of those is going ahead and uh, making sure that we don't try a one size fits all to all of our solutions. We need to make sure we're focusing more on local aspects so we need to go ahead and be making sure we're bringing people in from local communities and focusing on local problems. Because too often we try a one size fits all and frankly, we're you know, continuing to grow. We're the second largest county in the state. We have well over 500 PCPs and we're continuing to grow that number. We could actually have about 1400 and so we wanna keep going up. And to be able to really manage that, we need to be able to go ahead and work at a local level, you know, so when there's an issue that's specific to Taggart or specific to Beaverton or maybe a North Plains issue, it's not necessarily best tackled at a countywide level. Now at the same time, this you know, is also the kind of thing we need to do in order to really build our neighborhood leader program. So if we're talking about how we are most effective, it is by boots on the ground, it's people power. As I said, it's not you know, money, that's not our you know, specific strength and it's not the way we want to if we're really trying to push you know, progressive policies as we all are. And so we need to go ahead and work on those local solutions, you know, for that aspect as well. Now, 
this will also help bring us in and help make our county party more representative of the people we represent if we are involved in local communities and really helping to bring people from those local communities into the active county party structure. So another thing that we want to go ahead and work on really is uh, having effective meetings. So we want to make sure that you know we go ahead and have effective meetings where we're focused on the issues and not on our own issues with each other. So we want to go ahead and make sure that they're well run by the rules and that we go ahead and make sure that everybody has a way of being involved in our county party. So that will help make sure we are all feeling engaged and working on those issues that matter most to us. Okay, and so I'm sure we'll talk about a lot more here later on as the questions come in and I welcome you all and thank you for coming. It's a real pleasure to be with all of you. Uh, most of you are friends. A few of you I haven't had the chance to visit with much, so I'm looking forward to getting to know you. Um, I want to apologize at the top if I'm just a touch more scattered today than I usually am because uh, we found out yesterday that my aunt and uncle uh, who live in Paradise had their entire home burned down in the fires, and um, we were very worried about them. Thankfully, they're safe, but it still was a bit of a day. So in any event, it really brings to home that climate change is no joke, and I'm glad to be a part of a party that's doing our best to fight climate change. Anyway, the reason I decided to run for chair was people from all across the party asked me to consider it. And so I thought deeply about what I could bring to the role. I visited with former chairs and others who had served in positions of leadership. And we talked about what the chair can do and how the chair is important to the party moving forward. And so I got a sense for the role and I got a sense for what I could bring. Now, I hope all of you have this little flyer I made. It has the six key points that I'd like to see our party implement. You can see there that they involve partnering with our neighbor counties to flip house districts. That's something we've already done, but there's still more we can do. Uh, looking at the house district I just recently moved into in Hillsboro, uh, that's still held by a Republican, even though Ken Moore ran a wonderful campaign. The other key points are letting our Latinx and black communities lead us, because it's not enough for us just to talk about bringing diverse populations in underserved, underrepresented communities in to do what we're doing, we need to let them lead. We need to go to the groups that are already doing wonderful things and see how we can let them lead us. Most importantly, I just say that over the past few years of being involved with the county party, I've had the privilege to get to know people in Sherwood who are filling out postcards every evening in their homes, taking their times to send out to their neighbors to get candidates elected who will make a difference on gun control and other issues key to their heart. I've met people in Hillsboro who take the time to go and canvass to get candidates elected who, to the school, local offices like school board who will care for reproductive rights, who will see the values we want represented. I've met with people in Beaverton who are working to get candidates elected on uh, getting a house for every homeless person. I've met candidates in Tigard who are working to, make, to elect candidates who will make it an inclusive, welcoming community. These are the people that I agreed to run for chair for, the people who are making a difference in people's lives, who are doing something. These doers, that's the people I want to be chair for, because really that's all that matters. The, the rules issues, the concerns about various uh, minor issues, these are only tools that get us to making a difference in people's lives. So if that's what you see, making a difference, not being a small, insular, inward-looking party, but being a big, bold party that looks outward to change the world, and then I'd like to be your chair. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Okay, can we have Jeremy and Patrick both come up here? And I'm going to switch you back and forth for answering the questions. So the first question, we'll go to Patrick. Um, yeah. So you both get. So why are you a Democrat? <laughs> that is a good question. Um, it's, and it's a big question. The, the, I guess the key to it is, uh, my grandfather, um, like most of us, uh, had a big impact in my life, even though we lost him when I was still uh, relatively young. But he was in the US Navy. He fought in World War II. And then uh, when he came back, he was very involved uh, in his you know, Longshoremen's Union. He was a leader in the union. And he worked around water all of his life. And 
the things he taught about the importance of being together as the working class, as people who don't have perhaps um, all of the advantages that everyone else does. But when we work together, we can achieve a society where no one is left behind. That's really at the core of why I'm a Democrat, because I believe it's important that no one gets left behind in our society. And there are clear policies that we as Democrats stand for that cause us uh, to ha leave no one behind. It's, it's, we see it when we look at uh, that Democrats are the ones standing firm for Social Security and Medicare. Democrats, our platform, we're the ones standing for health care for all, for Medicare for all. So these are the policies that make me proud to be a Democrat. There's a lot of things around the edges, but the key core issue is no one gets left behind in our society. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm a Democrat because I think it is the best way to make sure we are making progressive change, you know, here at, in Washington County, here in Oregon, and at the national level. Right now, we as Democrats have gone ahead and been pushing, you know, and changing the discussion on health care. We are starting to talk more and more about universal health care. We're talking about the issues that really matter. And these are the things we can do and we can go ahead and change that narrative. And so I'm a Democrat because we do agree on many of the same progressive issues and we want to go ahead and make those changes in the world. Sometimes we disagree about exactly how to go do, and do it, but that, those are the debates we can have internally. But together, we're strong enough to go ahead and make sure we're working on those changes and we can go ahead and make those changes together. So the first, um, second question, I'll start with you, Jeremy. What do you perceive to be the most important function of the chair, and how do you propose doing that function as good or better than it has been done in the past? Okay, so the most important function of the chair is really to be a servant leader, to go ahead and be there to act, you know, in favor of all the constituents of your county party, in other words, the PCPs. You serve those PCPs. And for me, that means making sure I'm creating an environment where every PCP feels that they have the ability to make input fairly, that they feel that it's a safe environment, that, they, that we're gonna go ahead and work on creating an environment that represents everybody that's involved in our party. And also that when it comes to working with other organizations or working with the state party, that I am representing their interests as much as I possibly can. Because it's not about me, it's about everyone else here. It's about all of the PCPs here who I will be representing as chair of the county. I don't want to bring up my grandfather too much. It reminds me of and Andrew Gillum often spoke about his grandmother on the campaign trail of the election that just finished. But um, I do remember he worked around water all his life and so uh, on ships and boats. Um, and I remember him saying once when I was very young that what a captain needs is vision and capacity to execute that vision. And he may have just meant that as a throwaway remark, but it really stuck with me because I feel like that is what an organizational leader needs too, is the vision of where we're going to go and then the capacity to execute that vision because without one without the other, you won't get anywhere. So the most important thing the chair can do is have a vision for where we can go as a party and then the capacity, the skills, the relationship building, the leadership qualities to get everyone behind us and work together toward that vision. So you'll see on this little flyer I had the six key points that form my vision in a more detailed, granular form and then as to my capacity to execute that vision, I think that's spoken to by the fact that I've been endorsed by so many people from across the party uh, because they see the capacity I have to, to lead us forward. Mm -hmm. So Patrick, we're gonna start with you with the third question. What do you see as the biggest challenge to the Democratic Party and how do you plan to address that issue if you become a local level leader? There are so many challenges we face right now. It can be hard to pick one, but I think one that's nearest to my heart is the issue of seeing the Democratic Party have diverse representation. Um, it's a real concern right now what the president is doing to our immigrant communities, what he's saying, racist statements, but we have to look inward and make sure that we're not um, inadvertently practicing our values in a way that uh, leaves some people out, even on an implicit or un unintentional level. 
So I, I look around our county, and you know, Washington County is one of the most diverse counties, uh, not just in the state of Oregon, but really from Seattle to San Francisco, there's no county that's more diverse. We're even a little more diverse than Multnomah in many ways. And so I look around our county, I see 17% of our county uh, is Latinx, the population. But is that what we see in the party? Well, I've talked to a lot of our, our leaders of underserved communities about how we can improve that, and that's the biggest challenge I want to address as chair. I think the biggest challenge that I want to address as chair is making sure that we really show the people that we stand by our values. Because I think there is a bit of a problem, you know, in terms of getting the question of what do Democrats stand for. And we definitely stand for things. As if we have a strong platform, we do care about racial issues, we care about women's rights, we care about climate change, we care about health care, but we don't do a good job of communicating that and really you know, going to bat for those issues. And that's what we need to really work on changing. Because as we work on changing that, we will also, you know, activate, you know, Democrats, you know, across, you know, the state and throughout our county. We will get people more involved and we will actually be able to affect those changes on all those issues. It will go ahead and make sure that we help act and become more diverse as well because people will want to be involved in our party and we will actually be walking our talk and making sure we're bringing people in as well as fighting for climate change and universal health care. And so these are, I think, the single you know, thing we need to do most is walk our talk. And Jeremy, we'll start with you with this one. Um, it has become apparent that divisions are visible within our membership. What behavior will you undertake to heal those divisions if you are elected? Okay, so we certainly have divisions, and frankly, we always will. As I said, we're Democrats, we're a big tent party. So we always will have divisions, whether they'll be worse or better at times, will ebb and flow. Now, to go ahead and work on that, there's a few different things. First off, we have really well-run meetings where we go ahead and take out the, you know, the easy ability for people to snipe at each other, but really focus things back on the issues. And that's really running our meetings by the rules because we have rules for what's called decorum, which helps make sure that we focus on the matters at hand rather than personal issues between each other. Further, also, if we are giving everybody a chance to really be involved in the way that they want to be involved, and we're really pushing that kind of involvement and activity, that will also go ahead and help reduce our divides because people will feel that they're actually having the effect that they intend to by being within the county party. So it won't all just be focused you know, in a meeting where we have divides between each other. So that's what you know, I think will be the most effective ways of making those changes. Well, I think there's, that's a good point that running our meetings effectively and in a way that uh, doesn't allow anyone to feel left out is important, and that will help. But there's a lot of other things we can do, too. Uh, we, I think one of the things you've seen in organizations is that when people come to see each other, not just as um, fellow members of a party, but as friends, as colleagues, that that's very important. To, so there's not as much of a, a suspicions of, of what people's motives are, but people really uh, come to care about each other. So I think we can do more in terms of building. Uh, there's some Democratic parties I've spoken with because I've, I've tried to survey what other parties are doing in preparation for running, and I've seen other parties uh, have social have social events. We do some with our drinking liberally. I think we can do more uh, to get to know one each other and be close. But do that, and then um, run our meetings effectively. I think those are two keys that moving forward. Um, I'd also say that. I appreciate one of the reasons I agreed to run for chair was because so many people were asking me to run, uh, not just who supported the same candidate I did in 2016, but who many also who supported the other candidate. So I really feel like I've been able to build relationships with people all across the party. What tangible efforts would you make to reach out to our 114 different ethnic groups residing in Washington County? And Patrick? Yeah, I, this is incredibly important to me. I've had a chance to talk with um, the chair of the Latinx Outreach Committee here in our county um, and the chair of our Black American Caucus as well as uh, leaders of our state Black Caucus and other uh, state Native American Caucus and other groups, uh, many of whom have, have supported my run for chair. And what they've told me is that um, there's no silver bullet, so to speak. There's no way to immediately increase diversity in our county and immediately get everyone involved. What it is is it's doing the hard work over time. It's reaching out to all of these groups. It's doing what we can to produce as many materials as we can uh, in languages other than English that are common in our county. And we've seen the Latinx Outreach Committee in our county do an amazing job of that already, but we need to keep doing more. It's going to events as the chair, as the leader, and representing their party, telling people, this party belongs to you. We want you. We need you. Because when we get people from all backgrounds involved, really, not just in words, but we really do it, 
Oh, I, that'll make our party a lot stronger, I, I really believe. So, uh, similarly to my opponent here, I agree, you know, that this is something we really need to work on, and there is no single magic bullet. Some of the things, you know, that we can go ahead and do really is back to focusing on local, rather than trying to do it as a one-size-fits-all. I, as chair, would not be able to do this all by myself. The point is that I'm, we work to create a culture where we're bringing more people in. So we work to go ahead and do that more through our house district leaders, through our neighborhood leaders, making sure our committees and our caucuses are all more empowered to go ahead and reach out and go ahead and talk to those individual groups. Now, another thing we need to do too is that we don't work with other local groups within the county as much as we should. We, we're often too much of an island. And frankly, we need to reach out and build more collaborative relationships with all the organizations that are already in Washington County. And this will also help us go ahead and bring people of different ethnicities into our party and being more connected. Can you give us an, a specific example of a decision you personally disagree with but will faithfully carry out? Sure. Uh, so as, as the chair, your job is not to go ahead and counterman you know, the decision made by the body beneath you, even if you disagree with it. And so that is, you know, what I have to go ahead and do, you know, in some cases. And as chair of the platform and resolutions committee, I have had to do that. I, I stay silent while the committee is going ahead and debating issues on one resolution or another. And even if I don't agree with what that resolution is, I'm still the chair of that committee, and I represent that when I come to the body as a whole. Now, that's also the case of what I would be doing as chair of the county party. Even if I disagree ultimately with the decision that was made, I'm still the representative of that you know, party. So I will represent your decisions as you make, regardless of my own personal interest. Yes, that's, it is very important that we uh, represent what the body says, because the chair can put forward a vision, and I think that's expected in our organization, but ultimately the members make the final decision, and as chair, it's not our job to uh, overrule what the members decide. So I think you asked for a specific example, and I can think of a case where um, in another organization I was a part of, um, they decided to uh, not to limit campaign contributions uh, to the degree I thought was appropriate, because I felt like uh, while fundraising is very important in that particular organization at that time that we, for the cause we were advancing, it would be more effective if we only accepted small dollar donations, but they decided it was better to accept donations up to a higher limit, and I, as a leadership position in that organization, I accepted that and went forward with that, and I do the same thing in this body. Um, whatever the group decides, as chair, I'll effectively implement it, but I do want to set a vision out about how we can lead and how we can move forward on our key priorities. Okay, good. One last question, um, and Patrick, we'll start with you. Um, so, a little about the Neighborhood Leader Program. Do you agree that it's a vital part of the Washington, Washington County Dems, and is it effective? And also about our field director position. Um, how do you feel those work together, and how do you feel those are effectively helping our party to move forward? Our Neighborhood Leader Program is one of the best programs we have. I am very much in favor of that because when we talk about how we want to interact with other people, we see people get tired of campaign ads on television. People get tired of all the various ways of, of influencing them. But person-to-person -person contact with people you know is one of the best and most democratic ways we can communicate our values. Uh, in fact, the, what makes the Neighborhood Leader Program so special is that it's not just canvassing. It's repeatedly interacting with the same individuals in your local neighborhood so you build a relationship with them so they trust you and then you can get your message across. I am very proud of the Neighborhood Leader Program. Um, the other part of the question was about the field director. I think the field director is, does work, I see I'm, I don't have that much time left, but the field director does work with the Neighborhood Leader Program in uh, helping get uh, routes assigned and helping answer questions. Um, I know a lot of our volunteers do a lot as well in that regard, so I think they're both essential to making that program work. Okay, so the Neighborhood Leader Program is vitally important, you know, to us as a county because one of the things we really work on is, of course, making sure the ballot measures, you know, get passed, making sure we're electing, you know, candidates, you know, that represent us. That said, we've fallen behind. I mean, we are no longer the, you know, the top county in the state as far as having an effective neighborhood leader program. And so we need to go ahead and redouble our efforts into our neighborhood leader program and go ahead and actually 
be heavily working on building that neighborhood leader program up. So we can use the neighborhood leader program itself to also make sure you know, that we're out there, you know, really working on bringing more people in there, even if that takes tabling, you know, in front of, say, some of our local grocery stores or at our farmer's markets to make sure we're getting more people in there. Because, again, if we're talking about important things to what we do, it's people power on the ground. And quickly talking about the field director, yes, a field director and their ability to talk with campaigns and work with the neighborhood leader program is also important. Uh, and that's really all the time I have. So. Talk later. So <laughs> let's give Jeremy and Patrick a big round of applause for getting up there and doing a great job. Uh, Artita and Farah, would you come up here? Read my notes. Um, <laughs> closing statement, and since Jeremy started, I will have Patrick start with the closing statement. Thank you. Well, oh, I can go over here and our <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it's it's been an honor to answer a lot of your questions, and I just want to share a couple points. First of all, when I agreed to run for chair, all the people who were asking me to do it, what I told them was, "I'm in if you're in it with me." And what I meant by that is that sometimes the analogy of a conductor gets overused in an orchestra, but I think there's a lot of truth to it in organizations like ours that one person on their own can't really do much of anything at all, a little bit. But it's only when we all pitch in, we all work together, that we're able to get things accomplished. And so that's what I say to you today. If you just want someone to go off on their own and do things by themselves and you, you want to sit back and relax, then you probably shouldn't elect me chair, honestly. But if you want to have all of us pitch in together, working hard for the values we care about that can change people's lives, then I'm willing to be your chair and get that done. So I'd, I'd really appreciate your vote, uh, but most of all, I appreciate your friendship. Thank you. So thank you everybody once again for being here today. So I think we have two great chair candidates up here. So I want to say that off the bat, that you're not going to go wrong either one of us you vote. We do have slightly different emphasis on where we go ahead and put our interest, but we're both you know, people who will be there for all of you. Now that said, I do think you know, working on really getting people active in the way that they can, you know, building that kind of a culture of activism and changing the culture that we have internally so it's focused on issues rather than personal animosities is important. And also working on you know, really focusing on those local ways of uh, interacting as a county party with our own PCPs and with our own municipalities. I think these are you know, some of the main ways we focus and that works on changing all of these other issues that we have and that we all agree on. And so together, I think we can go ahead and move Washington County as a whole into the future. Thank you. So Farah's going to start off with her opening statement and followed by Martita. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right, I have three minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Farah Chaichi. I have been a Democrat probably since I registered at 18. I started coming to Young Dems events in 2014, and I became a PCP in 2016. In that time, I've seen a lot of areas uh, where we have an opportunity for improvement, so that's why I'm running for vice chair. I figured instead of complaining about the things that I don't like, maybe I should just take responsibility to change them myself. Um, I have been on a million committees. I won't list them for you now because no one wants to hear that. Outside of this, I'm also in my second and probably last chair position for the Human Rights Advisory Commission for the city of Beaverton and I work with the Oregon League of Conservation Voters for their endorsement process in Washington County. In my free time, I have a regular 
eight thirty to five job. Um, they don't ask me to stay late. I don't have business trips, so I have plenty of time to dedicate to this party. I don't volunteer for gigs unless I know I can actually do them. Um, part of what I want to see change in this party is communication, which we all heard earlier. I think if you have more effective, clear communication, consistent and often, you have a better running organization. Um, as vice chair, I think you're really an administrative support person for the chair, so they're going to lean on you a lot for those housekeeping issues, and when your house is in order, you can take care of business more efficiently. I also think that we need to have more opportunities for people to engage with us outside of meetings, where it's me talking to you and not them talking to us, um, and where you don't have to pay to get in. I'd also like to see more voices from the people who are actually doing the work on the committees. So we did not pass the resolution to have elected committee chairs, but as a vice chair, part of my job would be to ratify the appointments of those committee chairs. I would want to make sure that the people who are on the committees doing the work support the people who are being appointed to the committee chair positions. So they're the ones doing the work. They're the ones working with the chairs the most. They should have a say. Um, on top of that, I think that a clear, consistent, transparent application of the rules and bylaws is going to be one of the best things that we could do. And I think both of our chair candidates are going to be great at that. Um, as vice chair, you're up at the front of the room during the central committee meetings too. So you get to be another little nudge about, well, maybe we want to think about that for a second or re-communicate that to the people in the room. Um, so that's, I have 30 seconds left, but I only practiced for two minutes and I'm already <laughs> over. <laughs> Let's just do this. Hello? Okay. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is Martita Meyer, and I know a lot of you know me, but for those of you who do not, um, in this last year I've been serving as the communications chair for the Washington County Democrats. Um, I was part of the redesign team uh, for the website we have today and uh, the digital strategies that we've been using that we got to use this year for our midterm 2018 elections. Uh, why I chose to take that role is because I have a background in digital marketing and project management, which I feel is one of the reasons I would actually be successful as a vice chair, because as Farah stated, a lot of that job is to support the chair and take on that administrative role and make sure that the chair can be successful. So being that I'm a project manager, that's kind of what I'm used to doing is looking at the big picture, looking at how we can set our goals and moving forward and actually execute on those goals successfully. So that's why I feel I felt um, inspired when, when I was spoken to about running for vice chair. I thought, you know what, actually I probably have a good skill set to do this role. Um, so the other thing I started thinking about a lot when I was considering this role is, is there anything that I care about that I would want to contribute to our vision? So. The first thing is, um, I think resolutions are actually really key and important, and I'm really excited that our resolutions committee has done so much this year to bring that forth. And one of the things I would like to do is take that up another level. So um, right now, I think what happens is we take our resolutions, we vote on them, and we don't have really a good working mechanism yet to get those up to our legislative body to have them really understand that this is what we care about. You know, people who come to our meetings they're passionate Democrats. That's why they're coming once a month to the CC meetings. And I think we can say with confidence they represent the values of the Democratic Party. And if we don't have a regular interaction with the legislative body that we help get elected, then that communication vehicle is lost. So I would like to see how we can find a way to, ha to do a better job of actually making sure that they consistently get that feedback. Um, the other thing that I, I really care about and very passionate about is increasing the diversity in the party. Um, I know that I, it's just, it's something I've cared about my whole life. It's just, you know, we need to make sure that people of color, people with disabilities, the LGBT community actually feels welcome here, and that takes proactivity. I think that something that people forget a lot is that it's one thing to have your door open, but it's another thing to actually step outside and say, what interests you? what would actually make you want to come here? And that's what's, we, we just haven't gotten to that level yet. I don't think anybody's trying not to do that, it's just it takes another level of organization to actually have all the committees come together and say, okay, what do we need to do as a strategy 
to reach out to these different communities and have it feel for them like, I belong here. I actually want to be here. So those are the two things I care about most that I would want to further, aside from, of course, supporting my chair. <laughs> okay. Wrap it. So Martita, I'll have the first question for you, and thank you both. Um, Martita, why are you a Democrat? Why am I a Democrat? Um, you know, when I was in college, I, I debated on that a lot. I kind of toggled between being a Green Party and a Democrat, and, and I even, I'm going to admit, I, I voted for Ralph Nader, don't kill me, in 2000. I did. But you know what? It's because I always really cared about politics. I was always really uh, interested in politics and paying attention, and I always had very progressive values. But I felt that... Uh, as I got older, I started to really analyze like what, what party can I actually enter into and make a difference because the structure is there and the, the overall belief system that aligns with me is there. And I, and I know sometimes people feel that the Democratic Party, because it's a big tent, we don't always agree, but when I look at the value set of Democrats, I was like, no, this is, this is where I belong because I do care about healthcare for all and I do care about human rights and immigrant rights and people of color, and this is the party that cares about that. So as I as I grew and evolved as a person, um, I would just I became fully Democrat, and I love being part of this party. Uh, it's kind of a miracle I feel like that I'm a Democrat because both my parents were registered Republicans uh, when I registered. My father recently changed his registration to Democrat, though, thanks to me. Oh, that's um, that's, that's but. Great. Similarly, I just knew that the values that I have were represented in the Democratic Party and the Republican Party was not going to be anything for me. I didn't actually, my bad, know about the Green Party very much, so <laughs> it wasn't really an option. Um, but in high school, I joined Amnesty International and uh, I wanted to do anti-racism work and that was reflected in the Democratic Party, so I registered as a Democrat. I stayed because as time has gone on, there has been a lot more, um, I don't know, examples of the ways that the Democratic Party still represents my values. Okay. Next question, and Farah, would you start with this one? What do you perceive to be the most important function of your position, and how do you propose doing that function as good or better than it has in the past? Like I said, I think it's an administrative support role for the chair, and so you don't just do what the chair asks you to do, um, and I do this at my job. You look for areas where this isn't being done or this could be done better and you go to work doing that. You can't just wait for somebody to tell you what to do if you expect to have improvements and changes. And I do that at my job currently. I've done that at every job I've ever had. It's kind of annoying <laughs> to be able to see what needs to be done and notice that nobody else is recognizing it and then having to be the one that does it, but it gets you good marks in your evaluations every year at work. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's one of my strong suits, and I think I'd be really good at it. OK. So I agree with you on a lot of fronts. I think it's definitely an administrative role. And um, I also agree with you that you have to take it up a level, because I, I behave in a similar manner. I think the only thing that I would add is that one of the things I've learned over time working is that I, if I see something that's not working, yes, I have to go take actions, but I also have to inform people um, so that we can work on it together. I think I. Uh, I would want to add that quality to it. Not that you wouldn't, I'm just, it made me think about that while you were speaking about it. Because when I was younger, um, I did used to shoulder everything myself. And then I'd be like grumbly in the back. I'm like, nobody's helping me with this. And then as I got older, I realized maybe I should ask for help. Um, so I think, I think um, the, the role is meant to support the PCPs, support the chair, and really be listening. And listening for how can I help make a difference with people so that we can move forward our agendas. And Martita, what do you see as the biggest challenge to the Democratic Party, and how do you plan to address that issue if you become a local leader? I think the biggest challenge for the Democratic Party is actually, um, it's ironic, because we want to be a big tent, and it's really actually very difficult to be a big tent and, and, not, and still feel like we have partnership and get along. So um, for me, any way that I can facilitate listening and open-ended conversations where people actually feel heard I think it's hard sometimes because even though we're very ideologically aligned as Democrats, it's very hard sometimes to tell the difference between ideology and execution, right? Because we'll start getting into debates about how to execute on fulfilling on ideology. And it can get very passionate and people can get really frustrated because they might feel that some people aren't doing enough or they're not looking at it in the right way or that way is going to fail. Um, so I think being a space for listening and just helping people feel heard 
and listening for what we have in common so we can say, okay, we've heard all the ideas, like let's actually work through this. It gives people the feeling that it really, everybody belongs and, and we can remind each other that we actually are heading towards the same goals. I think a lot of that makes sense, um, but this last election cycle really showed me that there is a lot of belief out there that we aren't as much the party of the people as we can or have been. And so one of our big challenges is going to be to show that we are a party of the people, to stand for the working class values and not just say that we stand for the working class values and really hold leaders accountable who don't follow that. Like, Peter Courtney is going to probably be our Senate president, and there have been many times that he has not put forward something that we the people want. We're gonna have to be more vocal that that's not acceptable and we're not gonna take it. Otherwise, it just looks like we're serving our organizations rather than our constituents. And I really want us to serve our constituents. And Farah, what are your plans to address the lack of diversity in the party? Well, I think a lot of people have hit the nail on the head. We have to make our our environment welcoming for everyone, but I also know you can expect people to come to you, especially when they haven't felt welcome in the past. So we're gonna need to go out into community organizations and community events led by people who don't look like our party looks now and support them in the work that they're doing. And they may not necessarily show up at our events, but one of the things I really wanna do is have events where people can engage with us who aren't necessarily PCPs or donors. And I think that going to other people's events also facilitates that so that we can show that we really do care about causes and the people behind them and not necessarily just winning as Democrats. Okay. Um, I, I definitely agree, it, it's, it's so much more than just saying, hey, like, come on in. Um, especially, like, going out and participating in other organizations and speaking to them. I think, again, I, I, I go on the listening thing a lot, but it's, it's a form of active listening, and it might even be asking questions. I would go so far as to say if we need to do surveys, if we need to do things, and we need to ask people really direct questions, like, why don't you, why don't you want to be here? I want people to feel so comfortable with our party that they can tell us things that are really uncomfortable to hear because they know they're safe to do so. I just think if people don't feel safe to speak, why would they ever walk through our doors? So it's going to take research, and it's going to take actually participating with other groups to find the information so that we can actually transform the way we behave and do something about it. Um, one of the things I've been kicking around, I don't, I don't know how easy this would be to fulfill, but I think it would be great if we could actually work with some local um, universities and create um, programs where kids could come and work with us for a semester and we would make sure that that's a diverse population who gets the opportunity to work with us at the office and so forth. So I have a couple more questions, but I want to encourage people to come up and bring questions to Garrett if you have more questions for our vice presidential candidates. Um, so start with Martita. Martita, could you tell me um, or tell us some of the very specific things in your background that you have accomplished or done that will help you in this job? That I've okay, so um, I would like to say too, I think part of my background being that I come from a, a biracial background, it does help me understand looking at things from different angles. It's part of why I became an anthropology major, so even all the way back to college, studying anthropology gave me a very 360 view on the importance of taking different viewpoints in order to really understand what people are saying. Um, it completely formed every aspect of who I am today was, was studying anthropology. Um, I think as my career path went forward, as I said, I, I worked as a project manager. So from the administrative active, uh, aspect of this role, I've, just, I've spent my career doing that and I've spent my career always looking at, uh, when I go into an organization, I, I do take a very similar attitude that you take. I'm like, I, I look for what's missing and I very proactively want to fix it. I can't even, I'm not even comfortable somewhere if I see something that's just not working and I'm like, we have to do something, we have to do something. So I'll keep poking at it though from different angles to see what's the angle that's going to actually work and what clicks for people so that we can move it forward. Like I said, uh, my job basically, I do administrative work all of the time, but in my personal life too, I'm an incredibly organized, meticulous, thorough individual, and I feel like, not that the organization hasn't had that, but we need to continue to have people who are organized and detail-oriented. And in the Human Rights Advisory Commission, I've also spent a lot of time talking to city council and having to advocate for issues 
where people are going to be impacted if the wrong decision is made. And I think that as an organization, the Democrats really do have a voice and a place to speak up on those issues. So um, I will be at city council on Tuesday if anyone wants to see my skills in that area um, at Beaverton down the street. And Vera, could, could you tell me, tell all of us, um, what are two new ideas that you have that you would like to bring to your to this position? Um, two totally different ideas that haven't been tried or you know enacted yet that you would like to bring. Well, I think I've stated them both actually. Um, the having the committee chair positions be more a reflection of what the committee wants. I don't know if that's actually never been done, because like I said, I've only been in PCP since 2016. But I want to make sure that we're having a discussion or at least an email exchange with the committee members to be like, who do you think is good for this job? Who should we be considering? I want to know what they think before we make a decision for them. And then the other thing I've already mentioned is I want to have events where people can just interact with us. So the Progressive Caucus this summer had a cookout. And I think like at least 50 people showed up. We didn't charge anything. We asked people to bring a side dish. It was a lot of people who were really excited and happy to be there learning about our caucus and our party. And I think that we can continue to do that and be successful. Even if people don't show up to become PCPs later, they're still engaging with us. And that's really important. Um, I know I spoke about a couple ideas. I will first talk a little bit more about the internship idea that I've been rolling around. Um, I think one of the ways we could increase diversity is by creating an internship program where um, we would have a diverse pool of students that spend a semester working with the county party. So they could work at the office. Um, and I would actually want to see them working with particular caucuses and committees for a semester. And one of the things I would really like them to do at the end is write up about their experiences and have a questionnaire for them about things that they saw that they thought were great and things that weren't so great. We're only going to learn when we actually are willing and comfortable to take feedback and data. So I think that would be a good way to start reaching out um, and get, get feedback and have young people get engaged in a real way and, and actually have an experience with a county party. Um, and the other one was, like I said, with resolutions. I, I actually do think it's really important that our candidates do talk or uh, walk the walk, not just talk the talk. <laughs> I was going to say it backwards. It's, it's actually very important to me. I feel like we work really hard to get those people elected. And I think using the resolutions as a tool to communicate with them will be a way for us to really make sure that it was worth us getting them elected. OK, um, so Martita. This election, we had some good successes as Democrats. We got some good people elected. How are you going to use your, this position to help carry us forward to do even more in 2020? Well, some of the stuff that I've already mentioned, I think, uh, so I won't repeat that about some of these ideas. I would say the other really important thing is the Neighborhood Leader Program. Uh, it's such a great uh, framework to get thing, the, the word out the door. So there's so many more ways that we could utilize that force of people, right? They could um, go to events, maybe in their local communities. I think there's a, a many, many ways that we could actually think about, OK, this is the framework. And like, how can we get people involved at that next level using the, the neighborhood leader body and seeing what they're willing and comfortable to do and see if we can take that up a level. So I think that's another direction we can take to actually proactively reach out. I also agree the neighborhood leader is a huge tool. But I think that our underutilized tool is actually our house district leaders. As a PCP, I don't know that I have been directly contacted by my house district leader this last election cycle. Um, not that you know I had a lot of free time because we're getting no cause evicted. But <laughs> if they had contacted me, there would have been, like, at least over the last two years, more of a relationship built. And then people aren't waiting until the last minute when the election cycle happens. I think that there should be more communication across all levels of involvement in this party. And so really building out not just the neighborhood leader program, but our house district leaders to talk to our 565 PCPs and make sure that everyone is engaged regularly and not just at election time encourages them to really put out the effort when election time comes. And also, it would give us as PCPs that other reminder, like, you can get your friends and your neighbors to come with you to go knock doors in your neighborhood. It's not something that um, you have to do at just election time, either. I think that we should be out in the community more frequently so people don't for forget about us. So my last question is one that was also asked to our other candidates. Um, it's become apparent that there are divisions with visible within our membership. Um, and what behavior as vice chairs would you take to heal those divisions if you were elected? I think really respecting everybody's time and the 
efforts that they put into the party is important and treating everyone equally and fairly under the rules is a crucial foundation for all of that. But as you may recall, I was part of the effort to recall our current chair and there was a list of stuff there. What came from that wasn't a recall, but we did go to mediation and I was very serious about wanting a roadmap. We do have a roadmap of ideas for how to move forward and I wanna see those implemented. I'm really concerned that you know we might have done that and it doesn't get implemented and why did we spend this time and money on it? But we also came up with very good ideas that both sides agreed with. So I feel like following that mediation agreement would be really crucial in helping heal those divides, but also moving forward to work together. Um, I, I'm also glad you, with the mediation. I, I read through the mediation agreement and I thought it was awesome because that, that ties back to actually respecting and listening to one another. Um, one of the things that I've learned just in working in the workforce is that sometimes people don't communicate something because they don't think they're gonna be heard and they probably have the best idea in the room. So we have to continuously come to an open mind when we are having a debate and go, you might actually have a better way to execute and make things better than I do. And I think that coming with that attitude and trying to continuously facilitate, are we actually listening to each other right now? Like, are we actually committed to creating outcomes so that we can be open-minded and listen to all, all of the people who are contributing ideas and showing respect, letting people finish their, their, what they have to say, not rushing people, not looking at people from a perspective of you're on that side and you're from this group and we're from that group. We're all here because we give our time because we care about Democrat causes and I'm gonna make sure that that always feels like how you feel welcome here. Okay, and I think, um, thank you very much. And I think Martita, you get to start with oh. your closing speech. I was like, um, <laughs> um, so I just want to thank everybody for being here today. I, I remember when I got up this morning, I was kind of nervous because I wasn't quite sure what we were doing. I knew we were going to be asked questions. Um, and I, I, know, I know people don't know this about me, but I'm kind of introverted, so I was a little bit like, ah, oh, this is going to be hard to be in front of the room. So I really thank you for being just great listeners and, and for actually an asking great questions to us. Um, I, like I said, I, I, to me, this is, a serve, this is a servant role, right? Not just because you help fulfill uh, for and that administrative capacity, but anybody in a leader body, when you are in the leadership, you are there to serve. And to me, we are here to help serve the PCPs, become stronger, more empowered, and heard. And that is really important to me. And I want to make sure that PCPs are excited to come and vote at Central Committee meetings because they know it's going somewhere. I like this one better. <laughs> so I also wanna thank you all for coming here and giving me the opportunity to talk to you and answer your questions. I hope I did a good enough job, but if there's anything left, please come talk to me afterwards. I would love to talk to you. Um, I am really excited about this election going forward. I think that you have really great choices. I personally have a lot of ideas and would really love the chance to implement them, but I also would really love the chance to make our party grow and look a little more representative of where we live. Um, I feel like there's a lot of younger candidates as well, and for this last election cycle, particularly with the um, Parkland teens, there's really a drive to have younger people running the party, and we should probably be empowering the people who are gonna be left behind to take up the reins. I also wanna say that the communication Whoever wins is going to be great, I'm sure, but I intend either way to make sure that um, I'm communicating to others better as well. Thank you. So um, if people feel, I'm going to leave that decision up to Dan as chair, I used to pass it on. If people feel that this is appropriate, um, I want to keep within our time. Is there someone who could take one minute and do that?
voting in this important election. Okay. Barbara, are you okay with that? I guess I'll have okay. to be, but no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Um, there are many people here who were not aware that deviation had gone on. So are people okay with, and I'll have Dan make the executive decision, with us moving on and maybe talking to Louise or people afterwards, um, maybe towards the end when we have a little break, we can discuss that. I was going to give people a chance to vote. We, we're, I, was, I was putting a little three or four minute break in. Do you want to break now or do you want to have the second vice the second vice chair go first before we break? How many people would like to break now? How many people would like to wait until after Gabe? All right, Gabe, you're up. Hello, everybody. Is, can can y'all hear me? A little closer. Oh, 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 oh. Right there. Okay. It's, it's a team effort. Well, I want to thank y'all for being here. I want to thank the people who put a lot of effort into making this happen. It's a really great turnout. I'm really impressed to see this many folks. I can't remember the last time we had an event in Beaverton. It's so nice. I live eight minutes from here, so it's a really easy commute over. Uh, I'm running for second vice chair, and because I really care about our party, I really care about the work that we do, and would it be, you know, solving the issues that we have moving forward really begins with the credentialing process. You know, the first thing you do at a meeting is you become credentialed. You get your name badge, you make sure it's not spelled incorrectly, you make sure you get your voting badge, uh, and then you get take a seat. I have some really like, good ideas to make it, you know, more efficient and make it a little easier for folks to come in. Uh, I'd like to see the credentialing process be uh, electronic in some capacity so they can remove congestion when folks come in initially. I know that we have an issue with folks getting name badges right now uh, if they come in like half an hour late, so I'd really like to see that logistical issue be figured out. Uh, I'd also like to have, you know, we, we have a lot of issues coming out right now at CC meetings, and it gets kind of complicated, uh, you know, with all the, the rules and the points of order and all that nonsense. Uh, I'd like to see on the voting cards a simple explanation of Robert's rules, you know, just a quick, quick you know, 10 uh, frequently asked questions or like 10 procedural things so that people are like, oh, that's what that means, or oh, that's what that guy's doing right now. Uh, I think these are just like issues that clear out a lot of the you know, congestion that we have right now. Uh, I'm also running for, you know, those are like the official capacities of the second vice chair. Uh, obviously fulfilling, uh, you know, if the chair is in, not in capacity to do a meeting, if the first vice chair is not in capacity to do the meeting, uh, that's also a function of the, uh, the second vice chair. But I'm really running because I'm passionate about the work the party does. I've been involved with the party for a very long time. I've been on the executive board for about a little over two years now, serving as the Young Dems chair. Uh, and we've seen a, a transformation in some part. We see more young dams in leadership. We've seen young dams really put forward, a, you know, their ideas and their agenda, and make sure that people understand their place in the party, understand that we're oftentimes a vanguard for our progressive issues, making sure that the party hears us, and oftentimes, uh, you know, we forget. So my main reason why I'm running is I'd like to see an expansion of uh, young people, people of color, working class people, the people that we claim to represent uh, in our party, and get them involved in the functions of our party. Uh, I'm very proud of you know, the progressive platform that we pass. I'm very proud of the candidates that we have working uh, in Salem right now. Uh, I was involved with many campaigns, you know, from Erica Lopez to Susan McLean uh, to most recently Sarah Grider campaigning in some of the deepest red districts in this county. So I know what it takes to bring our message to folks who are in more rural areas or in the Republican parts of Washington County. And I'd love to work, in, uh, work with committees that are doing the groundwork right now uh, to make sure that we're going to those counties and making those house districts and Senate districts and making sure that we're doing everything we can uh, to make sure Washington County is completely blue so that we can make sure that our efforts mean a whole lot and that we can do the things that we care about. So that's why I'm running for second vice chair. Thank you. So some of these questions will be similar to what you've heard and some will be a little bit different. Okay. So why are you a Democrat? Uh, I'm a Democrat because I want to get the most progressive things done in our community as fast as possible. I really believe in the cause of our party and I really believe that the, it's a Democratic party that's going to bring forward things like tuition-free college and single-payer health care. I believe we can be a vehicle for working class people and the movements of our time and that we can do better in representing you know, what's really going on in our counties. So that's why I'm a Democrat, because I believe in the cause of our party. Okay. And what do you perceive to be the most important function of your position and how do you propose doing that function as good or better than it has been done in the past? Well, I think it's been done really well and I think credentialing is, is a tough issue. I think Chrissy's done a great job as second vice chair. Uh, I think that you know some of the issues I talked about a little earlier, you know, making sure that we have some sort of way of getting people clock checked in electronically that could cure some issues. Uh, but yeah, that's really you know the second vice chair is really a, a workhorse in some capacity. You know, doing the credentialing process is really important to making sure that we're doing it correctly. It takes a lot of time and effort, and you should give a shout out to people actually doing it. But th yeah, so I've talked a little bit a little about it, but uh, I think that's the main function, is being you know an administrative duty to the chair and doing what needs to be done for the for the chair. 
And what do you see as the biggest challenge to the Democratic Party, and how do you plan to address that issue if you become a local leader? Uh, I think the biggest issue facing our county party is probably uh, getting more folks who represent the county that we live in. Someone said that it's the most diverse county. It is. Uh, if you look at our CC, you might not expect that. You might not feel that so much. Uh, I'd like to bring in, and you know, as a young Dems chair, I've done a lot of work to bring in young people uh, who, ex you know, from diverse backgrounds into leadership, into our PCP, into our committees. You know, working on resolutions or working in the comms committee. Uh, I'd like to continue that. And what are your plans to address the lack of diversity in the party? Well, you got to go where people meet. You know, you got to go out and go into the community and talk to folks. And you know, they might not always say the most. You know, they're not always the most you know politically intense because you know, oftentimes we live in a bubble. You know, between you know, all these Democrats talking all this good talk. Uh, but if you go out in the streets, you know, folks who might agree with us on issues don't necessarily, you know, aren't necessarily in our bubble just yet. So getting those folks and getting them to the, you know, the county to get them excited about the functions of our party. Uh, not all of this, you know, not every, not every CC meeting is super fun. It's not super exciting. But getting people involved who care about the issues uh, could get them, you know, to care about those meetings and get them coming more often. And Gabe, I think you addressed a little bit of this, but you'll be doing credentialing. Could you talk about your experience and some ideas you have for that? Yeah, I have. Uh, I guess my most immediate experience is I run a lot of campaigns. That requires you know doing a lot of event planning and making sure people have what they need when they need it, making sure things are done when they need to be done. Uh, I have a lot of experience doing that, working you know for the Oregon Student Association for the OLCV and working for specific candidates. That experience directly relates to the credential committee. It goes hand in hand. Uh, again, I like to make it electronic. I would like to uh, put. Uh, Robert's rules, frequently asked questions involved in our voting cards, things like that. And a similar question I had asked before was, we've moved forward a lot with our recent election. How do you, as a second vice chair, plan to help the party move even further, um, like more Democrats in 2020? Well, not only would, you know, I want to work with, you know, with committees working to literally elect more Democrats, I'd like to uh, work with committees to make sure that the people in leadership in our county party, also as standing committee chairs, uh, look like the community that we live in, you know, Washington County. Uh, I'd like to work directly with the campaign committee to, you know, make sure that we're doing everything that we can uh, to be as productive as we can, and also work with counties. You know, a lot of our house districts are part of other counties. So, you know, like Senate District 13 is a little bit of Washington County, but it's also Yamhill, Marion County, uh, and Clackamas County. So making sure we're talking to folks and making sure we're using uh, our resources effectively, I think that's a big part of it. And Gabe, what are a couple of things that you think you can bring to this position that are new and in innovative? Well, uh, again, I think that putting uh, Robert's rules, you know, putting last questions on the voting cards, I think that making an electronic process that people can just like tag in and get what they need when they need it. Uh, I think those are, you know, things that could really change up how it goes and really make things easier. Uh, I've talked about that a little bit. And the same question has been asked before. It's an important question. It's become apparent that divisions are visible within our membership, and what behavior will you undertake to heal those divisions if you are elected? Well, I've taken, you know, I've taken a leadership position that I was a part of the mediation team that sat down and we hashed out real agreements. We talked about the issues that were facing our party, and we came up with real solutions. I think if you're candid with folks and you know you're, you assume people have good intentions, you know we're all volunteers, we're all giving our time. No one has malintention. Uh, you can work out your issues. And sure, we all come from different walks of life, but we're all Democrats for a reason. So I, you know, it, we can be practical people and talk about the issues that have, you know, that are going on. Uh, and give us a couple of things that personally that you have done or accomplished that speaks to your ability to do your to the job as vice second vice chair. Well, I've served as a young Dems chair for over two years. I've been uh, involved with a lot of the ongoing issues in, with the party. I've been involved in a lot of the reforms that we have. I've been a workhorse for a lot of the committees and worked for candidates specifically, volunteering, you know, over the years, hundreds of hours. Uh, I've knocked on several thousand doors for folks. I have run meetings and planned events, so I think that that experience speaks directly to the role that I'm seeking. And as part of the leadership team, what ideas do you have to help that leadership team function in a unified manner? Well, you know, I look, you know, I, I respect all the candidates running, and I like them all, all a lot. I, I look forward to working with these folks because I think that we all agree that things can be run better, but we also all agree that we're all Democrats and we all have progressive values, and that I'm really just excited to get to get to work and start start on day one. And last question. Can you give us an example, a specific example of a decision you personally disagreed with, but that you faithfully carried out? Well, I've had the opportunity to work on a lot of organizations. You know, I worked for the Oregon League of Conservation Voters. I was a field director for them. And, you know, oftentimes the organization, the executive board will make a decision in terms of, you know, what kind of donations they want to accept or what kind of, uh, con you know, communications they want to run. And uh, you just have to be a team player. And I, you know, in my capacity as young dams, I've worked with people I disagree with. Uh, I think folks will understand that. 
Uh, and we've come up with real solutions to make the party better, to make it more inclusive, to make it, uh, you know, make progress a reality and do the things that really impact people's lives. And we do have time for another question. So okay. what are you going to do to bring more PCPs and more diverse PCPs um, to grow our party and bring more people in to, you know, become Democrats, active Democrats, and help us move forward? Yeah, I think that goes back to, you know, going to where people are. You know, if you want to recruit people of color, you have to go out to where people of color are. I want to make sure that we have teams of folks ready to hit the streets, canvas, and knock doors, to, you know, talk to people about what issues they have, and not necessarily talk at them, but actually let them talk to us and be, you know, a beacon for their hopes and their dreams and their desires. Uh, because the people in Washington County, uh, a lot of them are struggling, and they expect more from us, uh, and I'd like to be a beacon for them. And that's also part of why I'm running. And you have a minute to do a closing speech. Okay. Well, you know, I will be here uh, afterwards. I know this is a tight election. You know, one candidate running for vice chair so far. <laughs> but all y'all have any questions or concerns, I'd love to chat with you. Uh, I'm really excited about the work that we have moving forward and what can be done for our party, and I look forward to doing it. So thank you very much. So we would, we would love more questions. Yeah. OK. Um, Let's, we're going to have to get started because we want to stay on time. We do have to be out of here at 5. And I think I really want to thank everyone for sticking around. I know it's been a long afternoon. Again, thank you for coming out. Thank you for the refreshments. And we have one candidate for secretary who is going to start with her three-minute open speech, Victoria Long. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see you. Um, I decided to run for... Uh, the uh, secretary position because I didn't think I'd have to speak in front of anybody. So, uh, <laughs> so I guess I was wrong about that. I have a lot to learn. And that's one of the reasons that I decided to do this is I thought, I, I've been helping out with the finance committee. That's been fun. But, uh, but it was a, a, it's just too much fun. And I thought I would like to do, <laughs> do something where I'm really learning a lot more about the infrastructure of our local party. This is the first time I've been involved in a local party, and um, this integrally, I've done canvassing before. So I wanted to learn more about it, and I have some pretty good skills. I'm pretty organized, and at least that's what I'm told. And um, I thought I would enjoy it, because I enjoy people, and I love to meet you all and become a friend. And um, that's why I'm here. <laughs> So Victoria, what are your qualifications and experiences as it relates to this position, and how much time can you devote to the role? Well, I'm retired, and um, I spent uh, about five years as an administrative assistant to the executive administrative assistant at a school board. And so I prepared agendas with my, uh, with my boss to, uh, for the uh, meetings they had every month, every month, and we had a, you know, it was very, you had to be very organized and you had to be consistent and there were a lot of good, uh, good information for me, I think, that might help me in this role. Plus, I, I'm sure I've got some other people that will help me to learn the job. So uh, I had that and I was also in some other support positions as an admin assistant. Um, I don't know if it helped. Uh, I had 30 years as an air traffic controller. I'm not sure that's going to help. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know how to deal with chaos though, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to helping out there. Um, so I have a lot of good strengths. I'm pretty organized. I have a lot of focus, reliability, quick learner, calm, resourceful, et cetera. <laughs> what experience with complicated motion practice and documentation do you have? Say that again. What experience with complicated motion practice and documentation do you have? Well, we, the, the agendas for um, the school district are sometimes 500 pages. Um, they do, they're 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 horrendous, and but you have and they're a legal document, and so I think I want to bring a sense of professionalism. It's not like we don't have it now, but that's what I would bring to the table: is being professional, cheerful, calm, and making sure that um, things are recorded correctly. And I don't have a lot of personal agenda about this job. I just want to be there. I don't expect to be speaking. I expect to be recording information. So. As a secretary, as a, as the meeting is moving on, if you're having some trouble kind of keeping track of how things are done, which having been a secretary knows that's easy to do, how do you how do you um, handle that and get over it and move on? You mean if it's going too fast? Going too fast, or you didn't catch something? I don't think it would be a bad idea to have a recorder in case it was going so fast that I would need to review it later, perhaps. 
Um, I don't know about that, though. I'm not sure that's okay to do or not, but that would be one tool I could possibly use. And then I would ask people to slow down. Uh, maybe maybe it's a, not a calm situation. That's not productive anyway, perhaps. So, you know, if I'm not, if it's going so fast that it, I can't get it recorded, perhaps we need to slow it down. And I just think it takes sometimes a, a word. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you some of the questions that were asked before other candidates because you, you're part of the executive committee and part of the team that's going to be leadership of the party. Um, so I wonder why are you a Democrat? I have not always been a Democrat. I'm a Democrat because I think that it's the better party. I think that we are a little more concerned about people first. It doesn't mean that other considerations are not important. The Republicans have good things too, I'm sure. At least I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've been a Republican since 2009. And at, I mean, uh, uh, no, no, I, uh, before that it was, uh, yeah a Democrat since 2009. Before that, I was a Republican. And um, I decided to canvass for a Barack Obama. And it was very rewarding. And we had a great president. And we're going to have another great president someday. Um, <laughs> so, so anyway, <laughs> I'm a Democrat because it's the best thing for my children. What do you perceive to be the most important function of your position as secretary? And how do you propose doing that function as good or better than it's been done in the past? Um, I'm not sure I can do it better, but I will try. I'm a learner. I want to learn while I'm doing. Um, and then I want to be able to share what I learn with others, which is, which is helping with transparency so that other people can know what's going on. There should be no secrets. And um, I believe that uh, I have the capability of doing a good job and, I, and I'm a very confident person. Whether I should be or not, that may be up to you to decide. But um, I'm confident and I'm pretty relaxed and um, I'll be very careful with the job. And as part of the executive team, how do you see yourself playing a role as someone who keeps the team moving effectively and works um, as a member of a teamwork situation? Well, I'm pretty good at keeping the eye on the ball. Um, sometimes I've noticed at meetings uh, good, bad, or indifferent, things do get bogged down. Sometimes you need to move along. And, or you need to remember what the focus is. Because we can lose sight of the focus. Um, if I'm called upon to alert people to that, I will. Because I, I kind of know what we're talking about, and I try to remember that. I'm not as good up here in front of you all. But um, I do try to uh, keep track of what's happening, and then keep going back to that until the business is finished with that, and then go on to the next thing. And Victoria, what are one or two new practices you might want to bring in to your job as secretary? Two new practices? Well, I wouldn't mind if we could maybe review and revamp and improve our process for voting. It seems very messy and not exact. And I, I, I don't even know how we would do that, but I think it'd be nice to be able to have a quicker way and a more precise way to vote instead of, you know, up and down and up and down, I don't know. So that's one thing that I would suggest looking at. Um, I also would like to see some of our meetings maybe at uh, different parts of the uh, county. Um, I was very excited to come over here. I'm always in, in Hillsboro. So uh, I love Hillsboro, but when I go anywhere else, I'm like, oh gosh, there's another world out here. And I'd like to, I think that if we went out to other parts of the country, uh, the country, the county, we would be able to get more people to come in and uh, take a greater stakeholder share in what we're doing. Because, you know, if it's always in Hillsboro, I mean, I like it. It's really convenient, but it isn't really fair. So. And again, this will be the last question. As a leader, um, you know, some, what part could you play with bringing more PCPs, more diverse PCPs into the party? Um, I'd like to see us outreach more to Latinx and, and other groups, but we have to go there. So we have to have a vision, and we have to have people who have time to do that. And we have to have somebody help keep that organized. And that's what I'd like to do, is help keep it organized. It, the more organized things are, the better things go. This has been a very organized meeting, by the way. Um, and I, I commend you all for being here and, and for making this happen so well. I'm, I'm very impressed. And I will do one more last question. So as part of the leadership team, the executive committee, um, if you feel that there is um, things a decision is going to be made that you may not agree with. How do you handle that? Well, I, I don't think I'm the boss. 
So um, I don't think that it's my position to insert myself. I'm there to record the information. If, I'm, if, if my point of view is asked, I'll share it. But I don't, I, you know, I'm not doing this because I need you to hear me. I'm, I'm here to do the business of the party. And if I'm called on to vote on something, I'll do it in an intelligent uh, way, considering all the facts. Um, and I, I, I'm not shy about that. But I'm not there to, to take over or do anything else. I'm there to record the minutes and then to do the, the, uh, the admin part of this job. The rest of it is, and then to learn. I, I have a whole lot to learn. <laughs> and you have a minute for closing statement. Well, I hope you vote on me since I'm the only one that's running. <laughs> and I hope I don't have to get up and talk a lot. But um, it's been a pleasure being here today, and I hope you have a great day. <laughs> I would like Keith and... Um, Keith and Veronica got to come up here. So now we have um, Veronica and Keith as our treasurer candidates. Thank you for um, stepping up to do this. And Veronica, your first for your opening speech. Hi, thank you. Um, so first of all, I do want to thank everybody for being here because it's really a gorgeous day and um, we're not going to have too many of these nice sunny ones. So um, thank you for giving it up, and especially all of you that have spent all the last weekends out canvassing. So you didn't even get this one off. Um, so. Um, I'm asking for your vote to continue in the position as treasurer. I've been your treasurer for the last almost four years now. Um, it's been a position that's um, traditionally had a lot of consistency. Um, one of my predecessors was the treasurer for, I think, 29 years. Um, so I, there's really only been like four treasurers in the last 40 plus years. Um, the value of that consistency is that it's not the basic part of the job that's complex. It's all the little odd details. So there's basic accounting, which is really pretty straightforward. But a lot of what the treasurer does is not really officially in the job description, but it's really critical to the party. So I work really closely with all the people on the finance committee giving them a lot of information and a lot of history so that they can be really successful with events or any other fundraising that they're doing. I work really closely with all the committee chairs, talking to them about what their vision is for their committee and what funds they think they might need and ways that they can go about doing different things or who they need to connect with to be successful, whether it's community outreach, whether it's the IT committee, whomever. Um, I can give them a lot of past history and I can give them a lot of connections and information. And I give them a lot of advice as they're working to put their budget together to be sure they're not leaving out things. Um, I, also, um, I also bring just like a lot of knowledge of Washington County. I've been working politically in this county since um, 2004, first at the congressional level, and then for state reps, and then for a statewide campaign. So I ha just have a lot of experience and people that I know that I can give advice from. I think that's it. Hello. Let me pull out my notes for a second. Um, so my name is Keith Haxon. Um, also, thank you for coming out today. It is a beautiful day. I kind of wish I was out there. But uh, I'm glad to be here getting informed about our officers in this important race. Um, I think the most important thing that I can bring to this position is clear communication, just really being upfront about what our finances are, where we're at, and what we're going to do moving forward. 
Um, I think I can also bring a, a lot of frugality to this position. I think the treasurer right now uh, has a lot of responsibility over how money is spent on certain things. And right now, we spend about 6% of our total uh, of money that we raise uh, on basically accounting, on banking fees and compliance reporting. I believe I can cut that down at least to half just by you know, switching the financial institution that we're working with or the payment processor that we have that might be charging us too much. Um, and the last thing is integrity. Um, it's really important and it's part of clear communication that you follow what you sign up for. So this job has a couple of different responsibilities um, and I think moving forward, you know, you need someone who's gonna um, follow all of those duties. That's it. Okay. Veronica, I need you and Keith up here because now you do the question and answer. So Keith, you go first this time. What are your qualifications and experiences that relates to this position and how much time can you devote to the role? So, it's a good question. Um, my, the amount of time that I can, I'll go with the time first, the amount of time that I can dedicate is probably about 20 to 30 hours a month, um, which I think is more than enough to fulfill the, the duties of this job. Um, my experience is that, you know, I've been the treasurer for many different campaigns, including, you know, um, my own campaign for city council many, many years ago, um, <laughs> including ballot initiatives, including I was a, me a founding member of a nonprofit. I wrote a grant request for over, uh, for $100,000 that was accepted. I know how to write budgets and I know how to administer funds. Right now I'm currently the treasurer for the instant runoff voting for Beaverton campaign, although full disclosure, we haven't raised a whole lot of money. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, you know, transactionally, I think that's, that's an important part, but then also I think it's really important to make sure that you're communicating well. And you know, I know how to build graphs and show the central committee, you know, not just what our budget is or, or what money that we have now, but you know, how, how does that compare to last month and to uh, our, our proposed budget and all that. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure. What are your qualifications and experiences that relate to this position, and how much time can you devote to the role? Um, so as I mentioned before, I've been the treasurer for the past four years. So I've been doing the job uh, during that time. In addition, I have been a treasurer for some other organizations, and I'm a treasurer for a campaign right now. Um, the job in a regular month takes about five hours a week, so 20 hours a month. But when we have major fundraisers, um, it goes up significantly. Um, and a major fundraiser can take maybe an additional 20 hours just in a given week, just because of all the filing you have to do. And some of that is dependent on whether we have elections going. So for example, when we did our major fundraiser this year, which was the New Burger Banquet, that was going on right in the middle of the fall election season and we had to do all the reporting within less than seven days. So um, that requires a lot of extra hours. Okay, and Veronica, we'll start with you with number two. What measures can you take to even better communicate the finances of the party to the Central Committee? And what are three changes you would like to make about how the job has been done in the past to make it even more effective and efficient? Um, so I have always communicated based on what the chair requested, so the reports that you see when you come to a central committee meeting now are based on what the prior chair had requested and the current chair was completely comfortable with. So uh, just as the secretary's job is to provide certain information as is needed, it's the same with the treasurer. And if there's um, a desire on the part of the chair or the central committee to have different information in different format, it can always be done. It's just as the meeting goes along, that's not necessarily been an area that everybody's been wildly interested in, um, and, so, and which is fine. You know, I mean, I think most people want to know, are we okay? And if the answer is yes, they say, fine, thank you very much, and please sit down. So um, I'm totally willing to, to do things. I don't have particular ideas of changes that I would make, um, but I'm always open to other people's requests. What was the question again? Okay, what measures can you take to um, help communicate the to, you know, effectively communicate the finances yeah. to the party, to the central committee, and what are three changes that you will make over about how the job has been done in the past to make it even more effective and efficient? Well, uh, as I alluded to in the beginning, I think it's important that we convey not just what the absolute numbers are, you know, we have $80,000 in this account, but how does it relative, you know, how does it relate to you know, what we are expecting or what we had last year or what we had last month. And that just, you know, basic pie graphs or bar graphs, you know, over time, line graphs, just give people an idea of, you know, are we okay? So right now we have a number and then we have to ask, well, is that number good 
or is that number bad? You know, it means graphs and charts and all of that. So that's one of the ways that I would um, change the way it's communicated. But probably also because we have um, primarily quarterly fundraisers, it would probably make sense to do a lot of these reports quarterly. On a month-to-month -month basis, it changes so much. You know, here we're close to the end of the year and we're $80,000 shy on our budget. Oh, no, we have the new burger, now we're fine. You know, so. Um, and I would also change the way our website is done right now. If you try to donate to the Blue Horizon Fund, you go through this process that looks like you jumped into the 90s internet. Um, I think we can streamline that, make that better, and that's a, a big part of what I would do. And you kind of brought the next question. Um, number three, how important is Blue Horizon and the office, and how do you propose using your office to further um, keep that funding going? I think Blue Horizon is the most important. I mean, I, I've made no secret about this, honestly. I think we should be more focused on Blue Horizon and not big money fundraisers as much. I think we spent a lot of time and energy in this party raising money, raising money. And I think, you know, small dollar repetitive donations are kind of, I think, where, where overall campaign finance is moving into. I think it would work better. And it really empowers people. When you see that a, a campaign or an organization has a a five or a six figure donation or just a lot of money, thousands of dollars. It, it, when you're gonna go donate $20, it just seems like why waste your time? You know, they're not even gonna care about that. Um, so I, I think that's something important we can do. I think the office right now is uh, fine, you know, just been remodeled. I don't know how I would change any of that. Um, I think I, I guess I answered the question. How important so, do you think is Blue Horizon in the office and what, how do you, um, how will you go about making sure this is funded if you feel that's important? Um, so first of all, the office came about because um, the Washington County Dems went to our local electeds and asked them what the most important things we could do to support them would be. And we did that back in early 2005. And the answer was, we need, and that's when Washington County was red. They said, we need a permanent presence in Washington County so the people know that the Democrats are here, not just at election season, but all year round for you. And that was the beginning of an office. So it is intrinsic to who the Washington County Dems have become. And the perfect example of that is moving to Hillsboro and then flipping Hillsboro because we were physically there. So the Blue Horizon supports it, it's critical and we do need to continue to encourage donors to make the small donations that make Blue Horizon possible. Um, number four, Veronica, will you, um, talk a little bit about how you're going to be able to put in the hours to meet reporting deadlines um, and I'm how you how you actually make sure that the reporting deadlines are met. So um, we are required to report on every 30 days, um, except in election season and then it's every seven days. So basically on 30 day reporting, I report twice a month, so basically every 15 days to ensure that things get processed in a timely manner and get through. I try and work closely with committee chairs so that if I know that they're gonna have expenditures, they know what they need to do to report in a timely manner to me. Um, we're all volunteers and so, you know, you're just trying to make people aware and sensitive. When we get to seven day reporting, some people report to me electronically, um, and that allows me to get the reports in a little bit faster. But um, that's pretty much basically it. Did you say that question again? Sure. Um, will you be able to put in the work to meet reporting deadlines, and how are you gonna make sure that those deadlines are met? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you take on this job, it's a legal responsibility that I would take very seriously and I'd fulfill no matter what. I gave an estimate of you know, how much time I think I'd regularly have to dedicate to this job, but I've, I've worked 100 hour weeks, I've worked ridiculous hours uh, in my life in the past, and you know, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Um, you know, as for being uh, you know, treasurer, I'd probably do it once a week, sit down on the weekend, go through all the transactions, file them. Um, I've worked with Oristar a lot, which is our state's um, you know, required financial reporting system for campaigns and so forth, uh, including our PAC, our party, which is kind of a PAC. Um, and I know how to use it. Right now we pay about $1,500 uh, for someone else to report to the state um, our finances. It's called compliance reporting. Mm -hmm. So I could get rid of that, do it myself, save us $1,500. I don't know why it would take so much time to be so complicated. So I think we can, we can do that. I've done it in the past many times. I've never um, had a problem with reporting on Oristar. 
Um, what are two unique things, we'll start with Keith, that you bring to this position that, um, you know, maybe two things in your background that you think you bring to this position that will make you especially effective? Two things in my background that I bring to this position that make me especially effective. Um, I, I, I could say integrity, you know, it's, it's doing the right thing even when it doesn't benefit you, it's when it doesn't, um, when no one's looking. Um, I've in my life, I can't get into all the messy details, I've only got a minute, but I've, I've faced a lot of challenges for having integrity. Doing the right thing at the right time is often not met with niceness. <laughs> it's often met with scorn and ridicule and, and harshness. And this is, I'm going back to being in the military. I was in special operations and I did not like what was going on and it went very poorly. So that's something in my background that I could uh, draw on and I guess I do draw on. Um, I also, I've spent a lot of time uh, in years as an organizer. I talk to people, communication, constant communication is so important. And communicating on different mediums, sending emails and text messages is really important to be an effective leader and organizer today. And being on all those, and just being able to communicate with a broad group of people is really important. Um, I bring a dedication to this party and this organization. Um, years of hard work to see that Democrats in our county realized that there was a party and candidates and people who wanted to represent them and carry forth their ideas. I bring a willingness to really work hard and I bring a willingness to work well with the other people. The treasurer is a big support person to this organization just as the secretary is. And so I bring hard work and um, desire. So you're gonna probably be working with whoever's doing fundraising for the party. So talk a little bit, I'll start with you, Veronica, about what's your background in doing fundraising and assisting with fundraising activities? Um, so I have been doing fundraising since I first got into politics. Um, the early part of what I did related to more organizing events and helping support them, but starting in 2006, I was a fundraiser for 10 years for a major political candidate. Um, when we decided to have an office and created the Blue Horizon Fund, I was the first chair of the Blue Horizon Fund and I did that for all the years until I became the treasurer. So I've done all of that fundraising. I also have really tried to work hard um, in terms of giving suggestions and advice with the finance folks and this year especially the Newberger, um, I really, jumped in a lot more than I have historically and really worked to help us sell tables and get good donors to our event. So you know, how would I help in fundraising or, or is it, I guess my background in fundraising, um, the thing that I'm most proud of, I, two things in fundraising, one was I wrote that um, grant request for $100,000 to, to found a nonprofit called Options for Homeless Residents of Ashland. I lived in Ashland for five years. Um, and it was accepted and there's a resource center there today. So I, I, part of my background is actually asking organizations for money. It's also something I did in other campaigns for 15 now. Um, but the other thing that I'm most proud of um, is when I was in 2012 and I was running for city council, I was actually sleeping out of my car <laughs> and basically running my office out of, uh, running my campaign out of that car. I was able to raise $3,000 and mount a, a pretty effective campaign that the opposition thought was so effective that I had to take out attack ad mailers and send them out to everybody in the city because they thought I was such a threat. Um, so I'm pretty proud of my ability to raise funds uh, in a pinch. But also, like I said, I think it starts out with the cause, and then you sell that cause to the organizations and to the small dollar donors. I'm going to go back and ask a few questions I've asked of other candidates. Um, Keith, why are you a Democrat? <laughs> There's a why did I become a Democrat and why I'm a Democrat now. Um, I became a Democrat for more practical reasons, you know, I had worked with other parties and I, I'm, a, I'm far on the left, as many of you know, um, so the Republicans were never an option for me. Um, and so having worked with these other third parties and seen the problems with them, um, I decided to try the Democrats. Um, and it came at the perfect time in 2015, 2016 when Bernie Sanders' campaign was, was mounting up. Um, but why am I still a Democrat today is because obviously I share the values of this party. I mean, I care about it. Um, it's not always perfect, but I, I think honestly I align with the values of this party more than any other party. I think what, what happens sometimes is that people who are elected to represent the values of this party sometimes don't. And I think if they did, uh, we wouldn't have this discord, we wouldn't have as much problems if we all you know, 
walked our talk. Thank you. Um, well, I always joke that I was born a Democrat, and if I ever voted for a Republican, my mother probably raised from the grave and hit me over the head. But um, I'm a Democrat now because basically um, I believe in the dignity of each human being, and I think the Democratic Party does. Um, I really believe in sharing what we have. I'm insulted by the ridiculous difference in wealth and what it allows. I'm concerned about language and respect and how people are treated. And those are the values that I think the Democratic Party has had and continues to have, and I want to see it have in the future. And Veronica, what do you per perceive to be the most important function of your position, and how do you propose doing that function as good or better than it's been done in the past? Um, two parts. One is just the accuracy and timeliness of the work that you have to do in terms of bringing money in, paying bills, and being sure that everything's reported. The other really important part is how you help the party move forward. So both of the chairs talked about having a vision and having some goals. And so our ideal is to have a budget system and the funds to help them achieve those goals. So any advice that you can give to help them reach their goals is really key to the treasurer's position. So uh, the treasurer is a really important position, and actually when I decided to run for it, it was even more important. Um, we recently just changed the bylaws to make it so that the budget committee chair is not the treasurer. So as far as what does the treasurer do um, that is most important, I think, yeah, absolutely. First of all, accuracy and accounting. If you're not doing that on the baseline, you're just not doing your job, and you failed on a pretty fundamental level. So you got to make sure what you report is accurate. But the second thing, and what I would think is in some ways the most important thing, um, is communication of, of what's happening. Like the whole point of having the treasurer's reports is not just to present an arbitrary number, it's to tell the membership where are we at, you know, strategically, what should we be thinking about? Do we have the money to invest in this project or do we need to start going out there and fundraising more? Where are we at? Where's the overall health of the organization? And so I think communicating that effectively is probably Maybe the most important thing, maybe the second most important thing to the party is just making sure that you're communicating the health and the overall financial status of the organization to the membership, clearly, so that they understand. And um, Keith, as part of the leadership team, you know, the officers, um, you have a lot of decision making to do, and how do you go about, if you feel that the team has one idea and you have another, how do you go about um, proceeding if you feel like you disagree with everyone else? It, I think it, it first starts with you have to weigh the importance of it. You know, there's, th this is not a, a, this is a group effort. This is not a party of one person. So you're never going to get your way on most things. <laughs> you know, you have 20 other people in the organization expect to get your way about one out of every 20 times. Um, so I, I think you have to really weigh the importance, you know. But there are some things, you know, that if are really important and other people are disagreeing with, you know, you've got to make your voice heard. We have a democratic process, and we should use that as much as possible if you feel strongly about something. You need to get up there and speak about it. Um, no one else is going to do it for you, uh, and that's how democracy works. So, but ultimately, you know, you get up there, you say your piece, and when the vote's taken, you got to live with the result. You know, play by the rules that everyone else plays by, and I think it'll mostly be okay. So, um, within the specific group of the five officers, um, in my experience, you know, we've really tried to work for a congenial conversation. I do believe that the chair who's elected by the party sets the goals for the organization and unless I really think that they're about to go off a cliff and take the party down with us, which I've never seen but it's always a possibility, my job is to support the chair and help the chair be successful in reaching their goals. I mean that's who was elected as the chair and they're elected based on the PCP's belief that they have the right visions. I always am very open about my ideas and my thoughts and my concerns, and I will point things out, but once a vote's taken, I support the executive team. 
And um, you each have one minute before closing, so I think, Keith, you start with the closing. Yeah, um, I didn't prepare for a closing speech, didn't know that we were going to have one, so uh, this will just be off the cuff, the most honest, straightforward thing that you've heard from me all day, um, <laughs> which is just that, uh, you know, I think a lot of people know me as a, a person who antagonizes or who is aggressive, who likes to make a ruckus. Um, and why I've been emphasizing important, uh, the clear communication is because that is not me. I'm kind of an introvert. I get nervous all the time, <laughs> all the time. I'm pretty nervous right now. Um, I have anxiety going back way long ago. But what I think is important is to alleviate all of that, to, to make sure that our interactions are better, is clear communication. So much of what you all have seen of me at the Central Committee meetings, if you've seen me, um, is because there are lots of other communication that happened behind the scenes that didn't produce anything. And it didn't go anywhere. And it had to come to a larger group. So that's all I can really say is it, if you're dealing with communication, if you're, if you're talking with people and you're addressing their concerns ahead of time, they don't come up at the last minute. Thank you. Um, financially, we're in really nice shape. We have a really big election coming up in 2020. I really want to help this party be able to do whatever it feels it needs to do in 2019 and 2020 so that we can be successful, not just in Washington County, but also in the state of Oregon. So I, my goal is to be supportive, to do my job quietly. You know, somebody joked, I used, I used to work for Tobias Reed, who's now our state treasurer, and somebody said to me the other day, oh, I haven't heard much from him, and I said, do you want to? <laughs> you know, so I think the goal is for the treasurer to kind of take care of the business, make sure everything's okay, and you don't want to hear too much about it. So that's my goal, thank you. to stand up, please. All of our candidates, stand up. And let's just give everyone a round of applause for stepping forward. And I want to thank everyone for coming out. As everyone pointed out, it's a nice day. You may still have time to enjoy a little bit of it. Um, there's food. We're ending early, so you can um, get to know your candidates better. But we will need some people to help us clean up. OK, thank you very much, everyone. Wait, one more. And again, thanks for all the food that everyone brings. <laughs> the what? The reorg. The reorg. Dan, come up and tell us about the reorg. Reorg meeting will be next Saturday. Uh, credentialing starts at eight o'clock. Uh, meeting will be called to order at nine at Meadow Park Middle School, I believe. Um, it should go smoothly. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, everything prepared as far as I can tell. So, hope to see you all there and everybody else. <laughs> Hopefully not very long. I, I would say at the outside maybe five or six hours. We do have the room till 5 o'clock, so we'll need to be wrapped up by then. But I, I would suspect we'll be wrapped up way before then. <laughs>